In today's video, we're going to talk about four reasons why I'm extremely bullish on the price of Bitcoin going into 2021. And, and specifically why I'm extremely bullish, I mean extremely bullish on the price right now. It has to do with four major events that are taking place, four major news stories that are taking place right now that simply confirm the fundamentals of what I believe Bitcoin is ultimately all about. First up is this article here although i disagree with this article or i disagree with what the article is reporting on this is actually not as bad as we first thought potentially let me just cover the article a little bit and then i'll get into more details again this is one of four reasons why i'm very bullish on bitcoin particularly going into 2021 u.s floats long dreaded plan to make crypto exchanges identify personal wallets I covered this briefly in my previous video, which when I talked about is Bitcoin going to crash and that video, I talked about that they were looking at requiring practically everyone who uses a wallet to do KYC on that wallet. And before you could send Bitcoin to a wallet, you also, ha even as an individual, might have to do KYC on that wallet. And I talked about how that could be really bad. Uh, however, they were doing a good job of creating the use case for Bitcoin strictly as a store of value. They were killing, they were trying to kill the use case of using it possibly as a cryptocurrency, which I believe as an actual currency, which I believe would has the most upside potential is for Bitcoin to ever break into the mass adoption as a currency that would offer tremendous upside potential the second best upside is for cryptocurrency primarily bitcoin to be a, used as a store of value or seen as a store of value and this article right here does not take away from that in fact it actually shows that it's not as bad the 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 possible rule changes aren't as bad as we thought u.s cryptocurrency users hoping to transfer their holdings from an exchange to their own personal wallets may need to comply with new know your customer requirements using a rule proposed by the treasury department friday a couple things to note here we're not going to cover this whole article but a couple things to be aware of i don't necessarily agree with this they are essentially forcing cryptocurrency exchanges to follow the exact same rules as banks do regarding know your customer kyc however most exchanges are already doing this They've put limits on what's required. Basically, it's similar to banks in a lot of ways. If you transact between, you know, if, if you send more than $10,000 in a day, the exchanges would also need to submit and store records involving such transactions with a total value of over $10,000 in a given reporting period, which is typically a day, or just maintain records of transaction over $3,000. Notice that's not very clear, but banks follow under these similar guidelines as well based on transactions, reporting transactions that take place. Most people think banks only report over $10,000, but the reality is they actually are supposed to take note of any transaction that they deem may be suspicious, period. And $3,000 mark is kind of a guideline for that. Now, I don't agree with this. I don't think that the bank's business what you do. I don't think it's the government business what you do with your own money, as long as it's legal and ethical. And I don't like the idea that they're trying to track and monitor every transaction. However, why is this bullish news? Because they're not telling every, they're not telling you as an individual, you, Mr. John Q public, that you are required to KYC AML everybody that you send cryptocurrency to. That would be an impossible, that impossibility. Like that would just be crazy and if enforceable that would essentially kill the transactional nature of cryptocurrency now here's what they are saying which is kind of stupid if you were to a lot of times people will withdraw from their they will withdraw from their exchange account and maybe they'll send cryptocurrency to a friend's wallet well that's not going to be allowed under this rule this rule would require you to withdraw to a KYC AML address that the exchange has on file, which means you would have to withdraw it to yourself first and then send it to your friend. So you'd have to complete two transactions. Um, that's just unnecessary in my personal opinion, but that's not the end of the world. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just not. Now, here's something else that's important. People say, well, this is a new law. This is not a new law. This is a proposed rule. Now, most Americans don't really understand this under a rule proposed by the Treasury Department on Friday. This is a rule and or a regulation. The 
um, the Treasury Department does this, the environmental agencies do this, the FTC does this. They can create rules and regulations that are enforceable. However, they are not, and, and they operate very similar to laws, but they're not created by the legislative branch. They're not created by Congress. This is literally, basically, one man drafting a rule. I think this is uh, egregious in the U.S., in, in the U.S. system of, of laws and legislature, I think this is ridiculous. I think such rules and regulations are crazy. However, this occurs all the time in the U.S. government. Someone writes a rule. Someone in authority writes a particular rule. And therefore, it is treated like a law. And it's a bit crazy. And the only way to overturn these rules ultimately would be going all the way up to the Supreme Court, who could overturn them in some cases. However, who who has the ability, the time, or the resources in the public to be able to do that? So I don't like the fact they're creating the rules. I don't like the nature of the rule. But ultimately, this does not. This is not nearly as bad as w was first speculated. As I first speculated on this channel. So I think for this reason alone, this is not. I said on this channel in a previous video that if there was going to be a massive pullback in 2021, as a 50 percent pullback or so, then it would most likely occur because of this rule. But I think this rule basically loses a lot of the teeth that I thought they may propose forward. So I was assuming worst case scenario. I always invest in my back of my mind with the worst case scenario mentality, seeing a 50% pullback if this was a very bad regulation. I don't like the regulation, but it's not nearly as bad as I first thought it was going to be. Okay, so that's first. That's the, This is the first news story that I think is very bullish long-term for Bitcoin or causes me to be very bullish long-term for Bitcoin. Number two, this is this is incredible to me. Musk inquires about moving large transactions to Bitcoin. Now, why do I think this is important? It's not so much that he's whether he actually does it or not. It's the fact that they're talking about this publicly on Twitter. Elon Musk is very, very much in the limelight. Obviously, he has a lot of following, of followers. People are paying attention to what he has to say. So the fact that he's talking about transaction and, uh, transacting in Bitcoin, I think is huge. Now, if he ever follows through and does this, this is going to be extraordinary. But what you're going to see in this news story is basically two financial power players two titans of business are discussing transacting in bitcoin and it's, it's a very interesting discussion the other thing that's very fascinating here is that elon musk himself seems a little bit uncertain about the capability of bitcoin which i think is fascinating when you think of a forward-thinking tech ceo like elon musk you would thought that he would have been somewhat abreast of what's going on in cryptocurrency elon musk inquired about converting large transactions of tesla inc balance sheet into bitcoin in a twitter exchange with michael saylor a prominent booster of the digital currency so michael saylor is the ceo of microstrategy we've talked about microstrategy on this channel before by the way if you're not already a subscriber of this channel do me a favor smash that subscribe button if you love cryptocurrency and you believe in the future of cryptocurrency we want you to be a part of this community hit that subscribe button don't join the crypto wealth crew all right let's keep going now, in this in this exchange they had, this is the part that I find most interesting. First of all, the CEO of MicroStrategy is saying, hey, you should put a big portion of your... He basically is telling him, you're going to pump this thing if you do this. Uh, everybody of every level will do a pump and dump. So he encourages them. He says, do your shareholders a favor, the CEO of MicroStrategy to Elon Musk. Do your shareholders a favor, a $100 billion favor. Other firms on the S&P 500 would follow your lead and in time it would grow to become a $1 trillion favor added in his tweet on Sunday. Basically saying, if you do this, everybody else is going to, the price is going to pump up and that would be good for you. It'd be good for your shareholders. And I, if he does do this, it would be pretty extraordinary. The exchange came after Musk posted a suggestive image indicating that he's tempted by Bitcoin, which has more than tripled in value this year. And then he asked this question. He said, are such large transactions even possible? The idea that Elon Musk does not realize that you can transact in in sizable Bitcoin, like in, in sizable transactions in Bitcoin. Like the idea that he doesn't realize this, I think is incredible. And by the way, Michael Saylor says, yes, I've purchased over 1.3 billion Bitcoin in past months and would be happy to share my playbook with you offline from one rocket scientist to another. That's incredible. That's incredible. What's It's shocking that Elon Musk doesn't know this, but I love the fact that they are having this conversation. 
Of course they are. There are several whales salivating at the opportunity of up unloading large quantities of Bitcoin on any institution of foolish enough to buy it. The problem for Tesla it will be finding a great fool to sell to when it needs actual cash to support its operations. Peter Schiff is a gold bug. I like Peter Schiff. I believe in almost everything the man talks about except when he talks about Bitcoin. And he's basically trying to discourage these guys from buying. The interesting thing about Peter Schiff is he's consistently wrong about Bitcoin, unfortunately. And here he continues to be wrong because it's done buying bitcoin was a great move for micro strategy and arguably it could be a great move for elon musk whether elon musk buys bitcoin or not is not what's incredible here what's incredible here is that if elon musk does not realize how see one of the cool things about bitcoin is how you can people like to argue that bitcoin fees are high bitcoin fees are the same amount in a single transaction meaning at the time of transaction bitcoin fees are the same amount whether you transact with you know, $100 in Bitcoin or $100 million in Bitcoin. The fee is the same. So when you talk about transacting large amounts of Bitcoin, in, of value in Bitcoin, then you're talking about making a transaction that can be very, very fast, far faster than legacy or traditional finance and far cheaper. And the fact that Elon Musk doesn't realize that is incredible because if Elon Musk is saying this, other people are reading it and wondering it of his same caliber. I think just having this conversation in public is incredible. And I believe it's a strong fundamental for cryptocurrency. If nothing else, uh, from every layer, it creates awareness. It creates awareness from the casual viewer. It creates awareness from CEOs who follow these guys. It creates awareness for journalists who follow them. It creates awareness for tech people and scientific minds who may not truly understand cryptocurrency because it's not where they put their mental energy. Like on every level, I think this is incredibly bullish for the future of Bitcoin. By the way, this is number two. We've got four more topics coming up. Four more topics come, or two more topics. Sorry, a total of four, two more topics coming up. Have you hit that like button yet? Hope you like this content. Hopefully I've earned your like. If not, I'm going to keep working at it. So next up. Stock drops, oils tumble on fresh travel restrictions related to this. So here's the thing. With everything going on, the fundamentals in the world right now, I believe economically the fundamentals are looking strong for Bitcoin. The more uncertainty there is, I believe that just like 2020, a big part of the bullet reason we've had a bullish market in 2020 is because of these restrictions, the, the, the way the economies have changed. We're, we're moving more towards a digital age, more towards an e-commerce age. When that happens, people become aware of Bitcoin, not to mention when this happens, there's a, the fourth story, this leads right into the fourth story. It ends up leading to this. Congress reaches a deal on $900 billion in relief in a $900 billion in the COVID relief package. So, Here's the thing, because of the uncertainty that's taking place in the stock market, because of the uncertainty in unemployment around the world, Congress is looking to do a relief package again. Whether you agree with this relief package or not, it's important for you to understand the U.S. government does not have money to pay this. They borrow it. In fact, I first started talking about U.S. government borrowing, and I was talking about them borrowing from China and Japan, et cetera, et cetera. About 16% or 18% of all of our, the U.S. foreign debt is held by China. And most people don't realize that. So, the, of course, you know, politicians like to talk tough on China. But at the end of the day, we need China because otherwise they couldn't afford to continue to put out the stimulus, which is unfortunate and ironic. However, here's what's interesting. When I first started talking about us borrowing money, because this is the printing money, borrowing money is one of the fundamental use cases for cryptocurrency. Because you as a citizen, your U.S. dollars, those of you that are American citizens or anyone who holds U.S. dollars, your U.S. dollars will buy less and less and less. The more the country goes in debt, the more the U.S. dollar gets inflated. They have to literally print money. Now, now check this out. The, whether you agree with the relief package or not, and I have a, I'm going to I'm going to put up a whole video breaking down what all's in this COVID relief package. So if you want to know, if you want to understand, you know, what direct payments are in there, how it's going to affect you, be sure to hit the subscribe button because I'm going to it's not totally crypto related, but I'm going to break that down in another video because I know there's a lot of people that want to understand what's in this nine hundred billion dollar relief package that was just just announced. So I'm going to be covering that in another video. So be sure to hit the subscribe button. Now, here's the thing with this. Whether you agree that we need it or not, if you don't have the money, you have to borrow the money and or print the money. The U.S. government does both. I want to show you something right here. This is... This is the current debt. 27 
trillion dollars in U.S. debt, meaning over two thirds of this, we can't. The U.S. government tax revenues only cover about a third of the debt. A third. Think about that. A third. So how do we keep paying our debt? How do we? If we go deep in debt and we can't pay our bills, what do we do? They literally print money. The problem when they print money is your savings, your U.S. dollars become worth less and less and less. Now this is a problem. Now you're like, well, I don't have a big savings. Maybe maybe you're like, I don't have a big retirement account in U.S. dollars. I don't have a big savings account. You know, I'm young. Wealth. What do you, I mean? I, heck, I might have a thousand dollars to my name if I'm lucky. So, but what you don't realize is this also affects wages. Because wages always lag inflation. So when people are like, oh, the, you know, we need universal basic income and the government's got to pay for it and all this stuff. If the government's paying for it, the only way they're paying for it is by borrowing and printing money. If they're printing money, which they have to do right now because they can't keep up with, they can't bring in enough revenue and let more governments are starting to lend money, let, lend less money to the U.S. government. More international governments are starting to lend less money to the U.S. government. So what happens is, they have to print more money. When they print more money, your let's just say you're making fifteen dollars an hour. Your fifteen dollars an hour does not buy as much or pay as many bills. Your rent starts going up. Your mortgage starts going up. You, the fast food bills start going up. Your grocery budget starts going up. Everything across the board starts to go up a little bit faster than your wage. Wages always, always, always lag inflation, which means you might be getting the same fifteen dollars an hour, but eventually it's going to be like you're only getting $10 an hour. Now, you may think that's dramatic. You may think that that can't be possible. I want you to understand something. Literally, the U.S. government right now is operating what is probably the largest Ponzi scheme in the world with our fiscal currency, with our fiat currency. I'm going to show you right here. If you just go back, this is a cool feature on the usdebtclock.org. I know when I started making videos, we were at 22 trillion, but check this out. If you go back to 2016, just four years ago, just four years ago, what do you think this number is going to be? Is it going to be 22? Let's take a look. Four years ago, 20. Think about this. In the entire history of the U.S., in 2016, the entire history of the U.S., our debt had totaled 20 trillion. By the way, this is real time. This is how quickly it's going up. Our debt had totaled 20 trillion and just 2020, four years later, today it's went up another seven, seven point five trillion or seven trillion. We're, that's like a forty percent increase in four years. Now, mind you, this is a total debt since our country's been borrowing money, decades and decades and decades, and it, in just four years it went up to seven trillion. But at the rate that we're borrowing money, what happens? Check this out. What happens if you move at the rate that we're borrowing money now? If you go ahead four more years, just four years, if you understand how compound interest works, then this is how compound debt works. So if you're making $15 an hour now and the debt's $27 trillion, just think about the inflation that has to occur and how much your $15 isn't going to buy just in four years. In four years, $27 trillion goes to $48 trillion. It almost doubles. Our debt almost doubles as if we continue at the current rate we're going right now as a nation. Now, this fundamental, I hate to see it, but this is exactly why Bitcoin was created, to prevent the government from printing money and devaluing your wages, devaluing your hourly earn rate, and devour, devaluing your savings. Devour is the right word as well. Devour your savings. So these fundamentals, I believe, are extremely, extremely bullish. Now, what do you need to do right now? If you don't understand how to invest in cryptocurrency, then I've, I've got two videos. First video, I believe that you need to understand the basics of, of investing in cryptocurrency. I'm going to put that on the end screen. You can go ahead and watch that video. The second thing is you need to learn how to earn a passive income in cryptocurrency. I believe passive income is the wave of the future. But when you can earn passive income in crypto, I believe that you have a leg up. Nothing in this video should be taken as personal financial advice. But at the very least, I hope you've understood some of the fundamentals that is, are going to cause Bitcoin, in my opinion, to ultimately skyrocket in price. If you believe in the future of cryptocurrency, if you find this technology interesting, do me a favor, make certain you've hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, click the bell notification icon. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to learn that decentralized cryptocurrency equals freedom. This is Crypto Wealth. I'm out.